Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Today's tutorial is all about using up those scraps. This block right here is sort of like controlled chaos. What we're going to do is take piles of our scraps, color code them into different piles, and then we're going to make fabric out of individual colors. Then we are going to piece them into this really pretty rainbow star. If you have never crumb quilted before, be sure to check out my scrappy crumb quilt video on how I made a quilt top in one day. I'll take you step by step on how to piece all of your crumbs together, making the ultimate scrappy look. The video is right here. Go ahead, click the link in the top right hand corner. I will also link that video at the end of this video. Enough talking already. Let's get busy making our scrappy crumb star quilt block. This is what you will need to make the identical star block that I have here. You'll either need low volume fabric or white. You'll need four four inch squares and you will also need four four and a half inch squares cut on the diagonal right in half. You'll also need eight scrappy crumb colors cut into four and a half inch squares and you'll need to cut those on the diagonal right in half. Now you will need to make eight sets of all these different colors that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and here I'm going to show you in green. Now I want to add more to this crumb scrap that I had already put together. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of green fabric and then lay another piece on top of that strip and then yet lay another piece right next to it. And then I'm going to sew right across. And this is what you should have right here. It's kind of odd looking, but what you're going to do is cut with your scissors or rotary cutter right up the center there. Now that essentially gives us two very large uh, two patches. When I assemble these scrappy big pieces of fabric with small crumbs, I typically let the seam allowance go to the side that it wants to and then I iron it in that direction. While we're assembling our crumbs, we're not going to really worry about which side goes to which side. But later, I want you to take note that we are going to be pressing our seams open when we get to the block assembly. But back to the crumb part. You see, I'm going to keep adding and adding and adding, making this fabric piece bigger and bigger. You see here, I'm going to sew right across the top right there once I get that other little piece where I want it. And then I'm going to end up with a very large piece with three pieces connected to it. So what I'm going to do is cut right up the center of where those are split at the top there which is going to give me three separate two patches. And then I'm going to take those and add those onto another piece of green fabric. Watch what I do with this next piece. I cut off the excess there and then I take this piece and I add it onto another piece and sew right down the seam allowance. And by doing this, I'll have several pieces connected together that I can then add to another piece of green fabric. The fun thing about crumb piecing is you don't have to worry about cutting on the diagonal. You don't have to worry about the bias, the grain line, none of that. You just piece it as you see fit. It's called improv quilting and it's a lot of fun. You should really give it a try if you've never tried it. So I just cut the end on the diagonal there and I'm going to add another piece of green fabric to add more interest to the quilt block. And I'm gonna sew right across it and then just iron it down. Next, I'm going to check the length of this fabric to the other fabric that I wanted to add it to. And I can tell by doing that, that I do need to add some to the very top of the one there on the left. So that's what I do. I go ahead and find another scrap piece that kind of resembles that in size and then just lay it down and just sew across the top there. I do use a quarter inch seam allowance on all of my piecings as well. And here I'm just going to give this one a good press 
Now I do also use the, the piece of wood, the clapper on all of my seams. This is going to really help us later when we want everything to be as flat as it possibly can be. And so what I'm going to do next is just slice off all those jagged edges to give me a nice clean side there. And then I'm going to add the other piece to it and then sew straight down at a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is what it should look like after I've sewn it. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to give it a press. Now remember, let the seam allowance go where it wants to go, the point of least resistance. Now in this particular one, I am going to have to snip into that quarter inch seam a little bit because some of my seam allowance wanted to go one way and the other wanted to go the other way. So to compromise, I make a small snip, being sure not to catch any threads and then I'm going to push one to one side and one to the other side. On this long seam, I actually had to cut in two separate spots in order to get the seam allowance to lay flat. And that's okay. Nobody's going to see it in the end and nobody's going to know about our little secret snip in the seam. After you make those snips, be sure to iron it with the hot press right after that being sure to push those to the sides that they want to go. And then we're going to turn it over and we are going to iron the top as well. And I'm also going to add that wood clapper on. That helps a ton. Now we're going to cut all of our four and a half inch blocks out of all of our colored crumb quilting fabric. Eventually though, these blocks will get cut down to four inches when we get them connected to the other blocks. I'll be quiet for a minute so you can watch me cut all of my colored blocks. <laughs> Give all your squares a last minute nice hot press. Next we're going to take all of our colored squares and cut them from point to point diagonally right down the center. It will feel kind of weird to you cutting through your fresh fabric that you just made from your scraps, but no worries, it'll come together. Next, you're going to do the same thing to that low volume or white fabric, those four and a half squares inch squares that you made, you're going to go point to point and cut them diagonally right down the center. Next, arrange all of those pieces just like this picture right here. Being sure to put the blues with the purples, the aquas with the green, the pink with the red, the yellow with the orange. Don't forget you should also have four of the cornerstones for this block in the low volume or the white. They should be four inches squared. Now it's time to take all of these pieces, just how you see them, and connect all of those triangles together. Here, I'll show you at the sewing machine. You see, I just take those two pieces, line them up really good, and then I use a quarter inch seam allowance straight down the center. Be sure to use the same exact seam allowance on every single diagonal piece. This ensures that we'll have better alignment at the end when we connect everything together. We want to be consistent every time, otherwise it's gonna be all crazy. Remember, controlled chaos. From here on out, we are pressing all of our seams open. I know it's kind of tedious, but it will really help these blocks lay nice and flat. You don't have to press real hard with the iron either. I'm just gliding it over. It's barely touching the top of the fabric. And then I'm using the clapper, the wooden clapper, and just putting it right down on that seam and it lays really nice and flat. 
That wood clapper is a game changer in my opinion. Next, we're going to square up our tiny little diagonal blocks. Following that diagonal line on your ruler, you're going to take that line and line it up where your two pieces are connected, right down the center. Now we want our block to be four inches, so I'm going to line it up really good, still making sure that diagonal line is there. Now you may have to press firmly down on this ruler as well because it might be a little bulky because of all the seams. But then after you've trimmed the one side, you're going to turn it around and then trim the other side, making sure that our block ends up at four inches. I'll show you one more square up with the orange block. So remember, lay your block down and follow that diagonal line on the ruler with where the two pieces connect. Pressing down firmly, and we want it to be four inches, so make sure your line says four inches around that entire block. You can see right through the ruler where your fabric starts and ends. And then after I do the one square up on the top and the side, I'm going to turn my piece and line up the diagonal once again. Before you cut, make sure that your diagonal line is right on top of that seam and that you've covered all of your four inch block through that see-through ruler. When all your pieces are all squared up, this is what you should have so far. Everything nice and connected together within their own block. Here I'm gonna just show you how we are going to construct the block. You're going to grab that green piece and flop it over onto your cornerstone and sew a quarter inch seam allowance right down the side. Next, you're going to grab the cornerstone on the right hand side and flop it onto your yellow triangle piece and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance right down the side there as well. Go down to the next row to the two turquoise pieces and go ahead and sew those together right down the side, the seam allowance a quarter inch and then you're going to do the orange and the yellow piece together, flip it together and sew down the side. And once you have all of those four pieces, then you're going to take like the turquoise piece and flip it up onto that top piece there, the green and the cornerstone. And you're going to sew the seam allowance and connect those together. And then you're going to do the same thing with the next side. Be sure to press open each seam after you sew it. And then this is what you should end up with right here, these two top pieces. And I'll spin it around the back. You can see everything is nice and opened. And I use the clapper so it's all nice and flat. Now what you're going to do next is do the same exact thing that you did to the top. So all those pieces in the same order, connecting them, opening up the seams, ironing real good, and putting the wooden clapper on it. This is what you should have so far, four separate larger pieces. And you see if I turn it around in the back, everything's been pressed open really, really nice and flat. So the next step is going to be to connect the two top pieces together, fold them onto one another, and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance down the side, and then you do the same thing to the bottom piece. This is what you should have looking good. Go ahead and turn it over and you see how everything is nice and flat. Now you know what the next step is, right? We are going to connect the top to the bottom. When we sew any of these points together, especially in the middle, we want to make sure that everything is lined up precisely. So you see here, I'm just showing you to line up that center seam with the other center seam so that we can get that point dead on. And then once you think you have it, go ahead and you can pin it or however you do it and then run it through the sewing machine at a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me show you a trick. I started sewing from the center down, making sure that I had perfect precision on my points in the center. And I just stopped to show you. I sewed to the end, to the edge of that fabric. And now what I'm going to do is close it back up I'm going to re-put it back in my sewing machine and again start at the center and work my way back down the other end. That's going to ensure that I do have pretty good points in the end.
Now I've never seen anyone else do it in quilting when they put their blocks together to make sure they have their points. So I'm not sure if it's quilting correct or not, but it worked for me, so I don't know. Here's the finished block at 14 and 3 quarters inches. Now you can make this block any size you want. This is just the size that I chose. All you really have to remember is that your corner stones are going to be a half an inch smaller than the other blocks that you make. Looking on point there in the middle, just saying. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.